Hi everyone, Michelle Kunz here, your nurse educator. Today we're going to review treating a patient in supraventricular tachycardia, SVT, that becomes unstable due to their fast heart rate. So we're going to review this um, rhythm using the DART Sim simulator on my iPad. Now the heart rate at 188, we should be taking a blood pressure. So when I take the blood pressure, it's 88 over 50. So I'm thinking that patient is unstable. It looks like they might be having a hard time breathing, so maybe we'll put a pulse oximeter on them. So certainly we like an oxygenation between 94 and 99, so that one looks extremely low. So we'll get some oxygen on that patient, and if we have to amboo them and assist them in, in breathing, we, we will. We could also uh, measure their CO2 uh, by measuring capnography if we need to. And if that patient is hyperventilating because they're anxious and don't feel good, the CO2 will be lower than normal. The normal CO2 or capnography level is between 35 and 40 on the capnography machine. So we have to treat this patient's rhythm. So the rhythm um, is SVT because the heart rate is above 180 due to a re-entry problem um, in their atrium somewhere. So we definitely have to treat them. They are unstable. Um, I know my team is getting ready with defibrillator pads to put that on the patient's chest because if they're un in an unstable SVT, we need to do a synchronized cardioversion. If their blood pressure was a little higher, I'd probably start with a medication. Adenosine is the medication of choice. It comes in six milligrams. We will draw it up with a saline flush ready to go. So when we give adenosine, we're going to give it push, fast, and flush, six milligrams. And if it did not um, convert the patient's rhythm, immediately, um, within two minutes, we'll give a second dose of 12 milligrams. So adenosine, six milligrams, repeat with 12 milligrams. If it's not, that is not successful in converting the patient's rhythm, we will have to do a synchronized cardioversion. Notice that the R wave has a flash above it, which makes sure that when we do deliver the shock, it will land on the R wave, avoiding a T wave, which is much safer for the patient. I'll have to select the joules. It is at 150. The recommendation is between 50 and 100 joules. Today we're going to start with 50. I'm going to charge the defibrillator. The pads are on the patient's chest, and if we can sedate the patient, we will, but at that blood pressure, I'm thinking he might not even be very conscious. But if any time that I can get the team to sedate the patient, we do that. I'm going to shock on three. One, I'm clear. Two, the oxygen flow is clear. Three, everyone is clear. Shock delivered. The patient goes back into an SVT, so adenosine and the cardioversion was unsuccessful. There are other medications we could try. Uh, one of the recommendations is, is to consider amiodarone. We know in VFib, the pulse, the do, I'm sorry, the dose of amiodarone was 300 milligrams. For the patient with a pulse, it's 150 milligrams in a small bag of about 100 mLs over 10 minutes. If that's infusing and there's no change, I'm going to have to get ready for synchronized cardioversion. I'm going to go up to 100 joules. I have to remember to press the sync button again. If the patient is stable, I might wait and see if the amiodarone will work. It doesn't work as fast as adenosine does. But if we have to, we will charge it up, consider sedating the patient. I'm clear. Oxygen flow is clear. Everyone clear, shock delivered. Hopefully the patient will go back into a regular rhythm. And maybe the blood pressure, if we take it again, will improve and all his numbers should improve as soon as his heart rate comes down. So thank you for spending time with me and treating the patient in SVT, and I hope you look at my other videos. Thank you.